Hey everyone, I'm going to explain how to do each kind of challenge in general in order to advance through the battle pass. You can complete challenges through your normal gameplay or a shortcut that I will also show you during this video. I have added timestamps to it just in case you are looking for something specific. This video is more of a handbook to make you prepared for the different challenges which are divided in different types. Common, Uncommon, Rare and Legendary Being the common the easier difficulty and the legendary the hardest ones to complete. Rare and Legendary challenges will give you more experience points towards leveling up on the battle pass and unlocking more items quickly than Common and Uncommon challenges, so prefer doing more Rare and Legendary challenges than the easier ones instead. The multipliers will help you leveling up even faster if you do the math. You have a limited amount of multipliers. If you run out of multipliers on your rare or legendary challenges, you may want to stick with the easier challenges than if you prefer, whatever, that's up to you really. Also, if you have no more experienced multipliers left in your challenges, you will receive new ones the next day the challenges reset. 5 new challenges mean 5 new experienced multipliers to use. Just in case you don't use any of those multipliers through the day, they will accumulate in the experience multipliers remaining. Together with more days, you may not do challenges where you will earn more experience multipliers. So you can spend them later once you complete any challenge. Thank you so much for this info about the multipliers. If you feel like not doing some of the current challenges, you can reroll them a few times per day before they reset, which is great. Rerolling the challenges will replace them with different ones. Now I will explain you how to successfully level up through the battle pass. It is all up to you to decide if you want to do this the legit way or through the nasty shortcut. This will not get you into any trouble, the admin mode has been into the game since the very beginning. If developers wanted to fully disable things, they would have done it already. Sometimes I do some challenges through my regular gameplay, while others I just do through admin mode which is not fun but saves up some time, actually a lot of time. I still strongly suggest you to go through the challenges through regular gameplay since it feels much more rewarding and fun. Before giving you a general explanation of how to trigger mostly challenges in this video, I will now show you to save up some of your time doing them through a shortcut if you just want to avoid most of the grind behind them. I advise you to go mainly for the rare and legendary if you have multiplayers left. If you are still up to purchase battle pass levels to skip work and support the game, go for it, or doing the challenges regularly through normal gameplay, go for it too, or simply completely ignore this feature, you are free just to do whatever you wish to, but it's great to have different alternatives in such game anyway. So first the shortcut, then how to exactly complete each type of challenge. Alright, if you want an easier way to level up the battle pass through the challenges, do this in the single player mode. Here you have full access to things like the server admin does. First thing you want to do is to head over to the in-game options and to the server settings, becoming an admin of your own session. then become a beast. Under the combat tab, switch the player damage and the NPC damage taken multiplier's value to 10. If you need to make the completely sunder or poison creatures challenges, turn these multiplier's values all the way back down to 1, or you will instantly kill those creatures instead and will not be able to complete those challenges. Now go to the admin panel and enable god mode, to avoid dying in the process. Enabling or disabling everything else in here is completely optional. Enable no spring cost for convenience, to prevent stamina from draining. The cloak mode will prevent NPCs to spot me, but you better keep this thing turned off so they will go after you and you can kill them more quickly as they are closer to you. This is simply a personal preference. Under god mode you don't die from hunger or thirst, but I still disable the eating option. 
and I avoid the night time while doing admin stuff by freezing the time. Depending on the challenge you are going for, you will need to come back to this panel later to spawn in items or NPCs. I also want to add up that by under admin mode you can quickly travel through the map by teleporting yourself to any spot of the map, just be careful to not go off limits or the wall of that will kill you. Any challenges that ask you to defeat NPCs will not be complete if you instantly nuke them with your admin powers. Meaning you must still kill them as you hold if you were playing normally by using weapons. However, you are still free to be under god mode and adjust the amount of damage you can deal against NPCs while you are trying to kill them. That's not a problem. Now I will give you a general explanation about how to complete each kind of challenge. Many challenges fall under the same categories, so I decided to put several of them together since some can be done in a similar way, while a few others are a little more different than most. Harvesting Challenges To complete these challenges you must fully harvest a resource node to trigger those challenges, otherwise it will not count. These may or not may require tools to complete, and the tools used will vary depending on the kind of challenge you are going for. You can use your hands for harvesting bushes, but it will take much longer than using a sickle. Also, you can use for other challenges a hatchet, a pick or a pickaxe. Spending some attribute points in the hard worker perk from the expertise attributes will help you mining resource nodes twice as fast. Optionally, an arcane staff can be used, just in case you have the mask call spell unlocked. You can cast this spell nearby resource nodes and fully harvest or mine nodes that will count to complete challenges faster. The challenges that ask you to gather certain things you are not sure where they are located at will make you going out to explore the map a little more. Using an interactive map from the web can be very helpful in this case. Gather Lotus is one of these challenges. Lotus plants are more abundant in the Isle of Sita than in the Exile Lands. Check out one of the links down below in this video description with a link for a map with markers of the locations of Lotus to complete the challenges. You can find vulture nests usually at the top of some rock cliffs. These nests have multiple feathers and you just have to find about two of those nests to complete this challenge, since picking up 10 feathers is all you need. For the butchering and skinning corpses challenges, you must use any kind of butchers or skinny knives on corpses. And you need to completely butcher or skin them all until they disappear to complete these challenges. To complete the harvest corpse using a religious tool challenge, you must use tools crafted exclusively at religious altars that are able to gather special resources from human corpses once you use them. You have to fully harvest the corpse or it will not count towards the challenge. To craft a tool or a healing item challenges, you can complete this just by handcrafting them through your inventory crafting section. For the armor piece challenge, you will need to use your armorer's bench instead, since coarse wraps won't do the job. Craft a legendary weapon and armor piece challenges. These are endgame challenges and maybe some of the most tricky to complete. There are just a few weapons and armor pieces classified as legendary that can be crafted. Just in case you have already gone through places like dungeons, in both official maps, you already have unlocked a few recipes to craft some of the craftable legendary weapons and armor pieces from those places. During my latest gameplay, I have unlocked for example the Champion's Armor in the Warmaker's Dungeon and the Lemurian Weapons in the Underwater Dungeon in the Exile Lands. Or even the Phyroxic Weapons by one of the vaults in the Isle of Sipta. So I can easily now craft these weapons and complete these challenges. Craft a Legendary Tool I've already crafted the only confirmed craftable legendary tool in my current gameplay without even noticing since other legendary tools can only be obtained through boss drops, but not be crafted. 
I've done some research about this challenge and I will give credit to Pixel Cave for this one and I'm linking down below on this video description their video with a guide about this challenge instead. Go check it out and see how to be able to complete this challenge. Under admin mode, spawn in fragments of power and try your luck at the places Pixel Cave tells in their video, alright? Credit for the community to help on this one too. Consume specific kinds of items challenges. Certain items are rare, so they are not easy to obtain right away. You must consume them to complete these challenges. A fragment of power can be dropped by certain bosses or found in small containers in specific parts of the map. For example, by the named city or at the dungeons in the Exile Lands or at the southeastern area in the Isle of Sipta. About the heart of a hero, if you are around the named city, make sure to kill the Silent Legend mini bosses since they drop these hearts. They are hidden in chests in the Isle of Sipta, southwestern area. Alternatively, you can spawn them in through the admin panel. Completely Sunder a Creature This type of challenge requires weapons with Sunder effect. Warhammers or maces will do the job. You must hit creatures with a heavy attack to sunder them. Heavy attacks are made with the right mouse button or whatever button you use if you are playing with a controller. Usually this challenge applies to rhinos and elephants. Sunder these animals about 5 times to complete this challenge and don't need to kill them if you don't want to. In the case of sundering rhinos, I choose sundering rhino bosses as I'm prone to kill normal rhinos while trying just to sunder them with certain weapons. Both rhinos and elephants can be usually found at the savannah by the exile lands and you can find them by open fields in the Isle of Sita E if I remember. Apply Sunder, Cripple and Bleed to Single Creature Challenge This one is a little more complicated, make sure to have with you a weapon that cripples, like swords and spears, a weapon that sunders, like maces or warhammers, and a weapon that causes bleeding, like war axes, spears, daggers and katanas. The effects need to be done one after another to complete the challenge. I don't really get this one a lot, but hopefully this works that way. Poison the creature challenge To kill creatures, it is strongly recommended to only use melee weapons with poison on them. I prefer using weapons that are poisonous by default, but you can optionally apply to certain weapons the limited use Scorpion Queen or Reaper Poison instead. You need to let the poison kill the creature, meaning the last damage done on the creature has to be done by the poison itself, not by the weapon, otherwise it will not trigger the challenge. Defeat 10 creatures, this type of challenge is self-explanatory. Once you kill this amount of the same kind of creatures, you will complete this challenge. These creatures can be prey or predators. Animals like antelopes and any babies are considered as a prey. If you have a challenge that asks you to kill hyenas, but you are currently playing on the Isle of Sita, you can kill hard wolves and the game will attack them as hyenas. If you choose to kill the Sertas while you have the kill 10 crocodiles challenge to do, killing the Sertas will also do the job. If you choose to do the shortcut and try to spawn in creatures like sand reapers for example, sometimes they have a different name in the admin spawning list. You must search for locusts in that list instead. Defeating giant creatures? Check the admin panel and type the word giant. It really works. Apparently the big red snakes by the desert also come to trigger this challenge. I've tested these before and can confirm. Challenges that ask you to defeat certain kinds of NPCs sometimes are not as easy as they may sound since some tribes or species can only be found in specific points of interest of the maps. For example, if the rare challenge of defeating Votaris of Skelos pops up in your game, you need to head over all the way up north in the Exile Lands and kill about 10 humans or serpent men in the volcanic area to complete its challenge. Do some research if you are not sure where certain kinds of NPC groups are located at. If you don't know certain kinds of creatures or specific enemies by name, researching for that name or spawning them through the admin panel if they are called by that exact name in there, which is not always the case, sometimes is just a great help. Defeat Storm Creatures Storm creatures are enemies that spawn in from the Maelstrom from the Isle of Sipta map. Fortunately, they can also be found in a few other parts of this map. Good news for players who don't own this DLC map. 
These storm creatures are now available in a couple of events that were added with the update 3.0 to the game. The Sacrifice Interrupted is one of the few events that can help you completing this challenge. At the north side of the Bridge of the Betrayer, if you reach the last phase of the Sacrifice Interrupted event there, there are storm creatures spawning that can count towards this challenge. If you don't own the Yellow Sip the DLC map, you won't be getting exclusive Allo Sip the DLC challenges by the way. Defeat bosses challenges. There are different kinds of bosses scattered through the maps. Midi bosses have one skull above their heads. World bosses are usually big sized creatures and you can distinguish them by the size they have in comparison with the normal looking creatures and a few more body details. World bosses have three skulls above their heads but they are not the only type of bosses with those three skulls. Named bosses also hold three skulls above their heads. This means they are by default more tough to beat than mini bosses and their health pool is bigger. If you don't know where certain bosses are located at, doing a research on the web can be a little help and save up some of your time looking for them. Defeat the Surge Boss This is a challenge exclusive for the Allosip the DLC owners. Search enemies and overall search bosses, as the name says, are NPCs that spawn in when you summon them at some of the Allo Citadel shrines. At times, bosses can show up together with other enemies from certain surge waves, so you can try killing them. Or you can go through the faster way and spawn one yourself to complete this challenge instead. Just go to the admin panel and type surge in the search bar. You want to look for anything that looks like a boss that comes from surges. To complete the dungeons and vaults challenges, you just have to defeat the final bosses of those dungeons. The easy and fastest way of completing these challenges is by spawning those dungeon bosses and killing them without having to go inside of those dungeons. I had some trouble doing this for the wine cellar and the well of Skellos bosses through the shortcut, so I decided to go inside those dungeons and head over to the final room and kill the bosses in there instead. For the fun of it, you can always do the dungeons and vaults normally like I've done multiple times before and finish the challenges as a rewarding quest that will give you extra experience points. Complete an event. To get this challenge done, you have to finish one of the events available in the maps, usually by killing all of the event's enemies from an event you may come across with. There is a more difficult challenge that asks you to complete three events. Visit points of interest. If you are not sure where the place the challenge is asking you to go is at, there are maps with markers online or other sources of info like the game wiki or overall Google to help you finding where the specific locations are so you can jump there and easily complete these challenges. Prey challenges will make you having to go to certain places of the map and using the worship emote to complete them. Try places like Muriela's Hope and such to learn religious emotes and see if that helps. Under the admin mode, at least if you are in the PC version of the game, you can bring in the command window with the insert key and type in learn all pet emotes and press enter to unlock every available emote. There are other sorts of commands to learn emotes by the way. And that's all I have to tell you about the challenges for now. As I said, it is all up to you to do this the way you prefer really. I'll be back soon with more content. Thank you for watching this video and have a good day.